welcome back to Alumni Stadium for the second game here, Friday Night Lights, between the GCVI Gales and the Bishop McDonnell Celtics. We got the Celtics kicking off here. Started off, that was Martina Verde. Get rid of it. That's Bryson Cook on the return, not much going past the 30. Bryson Cook on the return, brings it to the 31, and that's where the Gales will get this game started from, with the offense taking the field. Mark the ball at the 32. So we talked about the uh, matchup here. We got the Gales going up against the Bishop Mack Celtics. Bishop Mack is 3-1 and one on the season, where the Gales are 0-3. Actually, 0-4, sorry. And then uh, that would be 4-1. and one. So even with those records, you can tell who the favorite in this game going in is. As there's Hudson Drew over the middle. It's intercepted on the first play by Eric Verdun. And Verdun's going to get over the 40 to the 38. What a play to start this game Eric off for the Verdun Celtics. The yeah, off. that ball was and brutally underthrown. And Verdun just Celtics in the perfect spot capitalizes on it and uh, picks that ball off. And now Bishop Mack is going to have a chance to strike early. 39 seconds gone in this one. Now rolling out into the field is Cole Phillips for the Celtics. Missed him last week, but he's been one of one of the guys. I mean, one of the better quarterbacks in D10. Obviously, he had his struggles against St. James late in that game. The last time we saw him, great in the first half of that one. As they're going to run it here on first down, a big hole for Azizi in a nice game. Yeah, you talked about it. Phillips had a great first half, and in the second, I think he kind of got in his own head, started turning the ball over. So hopefully, he can bounce back today. So that's the last time we saw him was that second half. They still got the dub. He still did enough to get them that win. But we're hoping to see a bit more of that first half than the, that second half from him. Another give for Azizi and a nice run there. A big hole there goes Azizi. Azizi to the house. Touchdown, Azizi Celtics. To the house. And Akmal Azizi was a tough Celtics. game for him on the ground last week. But wow, two runs, two big ones. Yeah, you can tell right off the bat that this offensive line for Bishop Mack is creating some holes. And there was a massive one. I don't think he got touched 10 yards off the ball. And then he just finds that huge hole. And I don't think he ever got touched and walked into the end zone. Great job by Azizi to find the lanes and take them. Yeah, it looked like there's really no contact. Maybe half an arm tackle, but two uh, runs on the ground for 38 yards to start this game off is great for him, especially seeing, we uh, recall, the Celtics were struggling so much on first down those runs, only picking up one or two against the Spartans, but a great turnaround here. Is that uh, PAT was blocked. So it'll just be a six-point lead for the Celtics. 6 nothing Celtics. It's a great start for Bishop Mack. But that could be the difference with this Bishop Mack offense is that run game. If it gets established, they could be a scary offense. Yeah, we always talk about their passing game being more dominant of their uh, in their offense, but it, we always talk about if they could have a run game, this team could be so good. They just never really get it going consistently. You know, they have some big runs throughout the game, but it's not those consistent five-yard runs, five-yard runs. But hopefully as easy you can get off to a pace like that to start today. Hudson Drew back out here with the Gales. It's going to be a pitch out for Adam Geddes. And Geddes is going to be wrapped up. We do have a late flag there. That it was, was definitely to... on the tackle. Adam on the Talked about struggling on the ground. Adam Geddes, his last time out, really had a tough day on the ground, and it wasn't really mostly his fault. GC just couldn't get any push from their offensive line. Yeah, they had absolutely no push last game. The passing game wasn't moving great, and that defense was honestly not playing that well either. Probably was what kept them in the game, but near the end of the game collapsed for them. Penalty does get him a first down. Obviously, looking at GC's offense, the guy to watch is Warris Hedekiel, that wide out number 10. 
Yeah, had a huge part in this offense last last week, giving them most of their offensive production. First down run, this is Matt Robinson. And Robinson's not going to get much on that carry as he's met only a couple yards after the line of scrimmage. Give him one on that. This Bishop Mack uh, run defense is actually unbelievable. We talked about it. Wouldn't call it the best in D10 by any means, but they're definitely in the top three. Got to think them, Sin, and Ross when it comes to run defense are up there. Yeah, and that linebacking core for Bishop Mack is so important to what they do. Got some key players on there. Second down and eight from the 52. Little run action. Drew's going to look for Hedekiel, who had a little bit of space there sitting down the curl, just couldn't Hudson hook up Drew with him. For yeah, nice job by Hedekiel to find. They were running his own coverage, half his cover in the flat, and they're playing the corner deep, so a curl there is perfect, but just bit thrown to the side had a kill had to readjust and couldn't get his hands on it so it brings up third down that's Shoniker and Oates back there for the Celtics had a kill to get this one away takes a hop at the 25 fielded by Philip Oates and there goes Oates Nice tackle there in the open field by Bryson Cook. Yeah, Cook did a nice job of wrapping up there. If he didn't grab it, it didn't look like there was anyone else there really in sight for the Gales. Oates could have been gone. There's a flag on that far sideline in front of the Gale bench. We'll see what that is. Flag down on the far side of the field. Stand by. Celtics on the return. Interesting seeing that flag was from the far side. First down, another run for Azizi. And another good gain just short of the first down marker gain of eight. You can definitely see today that BM is getting a way better push from that offensive line early. We haven't seen a push like that from this offensive line yet. On first, it's now second day and two. No offense to this Gales defensive line, I do think it's the level of competition. Second down, yet another run, and yeah, big hole for Azizi as there he goes. Burst of speed, what a tackle. Bryce Cook, he mentioned his name a few times early in this game, another good one. Yeah, Cook just saved a touchdown there, and we said on that punt return that his tackle might have saved a touchdown. That one, 100% sure, saved a touchdown. First from Azizi is looking good for the Celtic seven. offense. First and ten Celtics. First down. Another give. That ball was actually on the ground. Sorry, I didn't see it initially. That ball was out. There is a flag on the play. It was recovered by Ethan Hill of the defense. Not too much celebration from that GC side, so I imagine that's Ball coming back. Loose. Flag on the play. And obviously we've seen this a lot through uh, D10, but mostly it's this team, the Celtics. They've had trouble Ball with side, those handoffs, deals. communication between their quarterback and running back. Yeah, we saw last week one go on the ground in a crucial point of the game. But last time we saw Cole Phillips and Azizi out there together, there wasn't anything that hit the ground, but there was just, you could tell that it wasn't going smoothly. There was a couple bobbled ones. Nothing that really costed them in the end, but something to keep an eye out on. First and five. Another give for Azizi, and he is met there. Maybe getting a yard. Not yeah, even right that's, back what you, the line. that's exactly what you need if you're the Gales. They've been running all over you. Their offensive line's been getting dominant pushes on you. So you got to do something to change that, and they come up. Their linebacker, I believe that was the linebacker, came up there and made that tackle. I think that's Adam Geddes. Another one of those 
those guys that plays both sides of the ball. Had a much better day defensively than he did offensively last week. Phillips going out to the far side. It's caught by Sam Shoniker, who will be wrapped up out of bounds. It's a tough throw to make, and he makes it pretty well there. Sam Shoniker making it look easy. First down, Celtics. Those ones to the <laughs> on the uh, far hash there to the sticks. Did a nice job there getting that to Shoniker. First down, another run for Azizi. He's going to cut it back to the middle. Now Akmal Azizi bouncing to the outside. He's got another Celtic touchdown. Great, great run by Azizi. He was patient. He didn't. There was an initial hole. He took that initial hole, but it closed pretty quickly. And great job by him to be patient. Look, look around a bit. He sees that hole to the right, makes a beautiful cut, and takes it. And that's a house call for him. His second already in the day. Good start for the Celtics. As we're not even halfway through this first quarter. Two scores on the board already. If you're the Celtics, there's no point of complicating this. <laughs> keep it simple. You're running the ball. Well, just keep running the ball until they can prove they can stop you. So the PAT is up and through for Martina Vare. 13-point lead for the Celtics. It is good, making 13 nothing. Bishop back now. 6.31 to go. After the Gales, you're, you just got two touchdowns scored on you early. You're going to need something to respond, hopefully. If not, this game can be winding down pretty quick. So this, yeah, this is going to be a big set here for the Gales because they're going to need some first down, some offensive consistency because it's already looking like you can snowball out of control. Celtics, one of those teams that just feel like they can avalanche scores on top of you when it's going poorly for your team. First down, it's going to be a run for Robinson, and that is not going to go anywhere. Met by Ethan Malone in the middle. Yeah, Malone clogged that hole. Wrapped up. Picks up a gain of a yard. Second and nine. Just hit that gap so hard. <laughs> Really nowhere for Gettys to run there. Second and nine after the pick of just one. Now second and nine. Play action. Drew rolling to his right. He's gonna get this off for Robinson. Falls incomplete. We haven't anything, but I call Brandon. I just texted him, so I'm sure he'll get back to me. Just didn't know if he knew more. I'll go. Thank you. Okay. Yep. BM got some good pressure there, and Drew really had nothing there. A great job by him to find Robinson. Passes off, but he had nothing there. He's trying to make a play out of nothing. That'll result in a punt away from Hedekiel. Very high punt, not a good one as it'll be fielded. There'll be a no yards call as Valdez had that with a couple of green shirts in the area. We'll see. The flag should just move the Celtics up five. Justin Valdez on the return. Flag on the play. Valdez with a eventually brought down around the GCDI 43. Yeah, so there's no yards. And now the Celtics, right, right back in fantastic field position. And the Gales really got to be careful no here. It feels like Gales. every offensive possession he has just running wild on them. Yeah, they're going to have to do something to stop the run, like we said. And if you're BM, why go away from the run if you don't have to? It's going to be a read option that's going to end in Phillips keeping it as he's pushing it out of bounds. Once again, Cook on the tackle. But keep it simple. No, no point of 
throwing the ball up a bunch of times if they can't stop it. They haven't shown they can stop it, so. Old Bills to all the option, gets to the 22-yard line, second down. Now second and four upcoming. Phillips, give to Azizi. Nice move in the backfield to avoid a tackle. And a stiff arm will get him just shy. No oh, I think they're going to give it to him. That was a nice job by Azizi. He should have been gobbled up in that backfield, but he made a nice cut to create some room for himself. The ball is marked down at and he's having his best game we've seen for sure. It's not even out of the first quarter yet, and we can say that with confidence. So I'm just going to hurry up and snap this ball. Is it? No one lined up on Curly on that side. They're going to go to Curly, who's wide open. Touchdown, Celtics. Nice job by Phillips. Saw that the uh, Gales were not ready. Finds the open man, Curly. It looks like he lost him for a second when he did snap that ball. But nice job by Curly. Sat right in the end zone. And Phillips delivered that right on the button. My mistake, that wasn't even, uh, that wasn't Curly. That was Seth Nelson, so my mistake on that call. But Seth Nelson with the third touchdown of the game. Yeah, I'm going to have to say sorry for that, too. <laughs> so Martina Vare trying to make it a 20-point game. The kick is up and good. Stroke right through, so... The Celtics, three for three on offense. It's not like they've marched down the whole length of the field. They've been given some great field position, but I say given. Their defense is called. Yeah, their defense played good, caused a turnover as well. And that punt wasn't very good from the Gales. If you're the Gales, you're pretty beat up about that last touchdown, though, because it was just a mental mistake. It wasn't like they were better than you or they outworked. It was just a mental mistake. So you're, they're going to need to get something soon. Also, this game's just going to keep spiraling out of control. Those mistakes, is, that, that's got to drive a coach nuts, you know? You can, you can handle a guy making a physical mistake like that, but mental mistakes, not being ready, lack of preparedness, that's got to hurt. Yeah, as yeah, because um, as a coach, you know, you teach these guys all year this, and then the last game of the year, something happens like that, you're going to be pretty ticked off. <laughs> So a fresh set of downs for GC already down 20 in this game. And offside? The, yeah, I mean, well, full start. Maybe, yeah. We go procedure. Some BM pointing towards the Gales. Looks of it. Still no signs, but it looks like they're going to Yeah, it back. looks like he's going backwards. Procedure. Gales. First down. I'm seeing these teams that Five are struggling to get positive yards first. on first down put themselves behind the sticks before they can even get a playoff. It's just, just disheartening. It stings a lot when you haven't been able to uh, get anything offensively all day, and then you get a dri you start the drive off, and you're already going backwards before you even snap the ball. Three minutes left in the first quarter. pitch out. They're going to reverse this for Wars Hedekiel. Nearly tackled in the backfield, but a how oh, he gets out of that one. I thought he was for sure wrapped up. He's going to get back to the original line of scrimmage. That was Daniel Charbonneau who had him in the backfield. It would have been a loss awesome ten. Yeah, two guys should have had him back there. Neither had Hedekiel. Great job by him. He only gets back to the line of scrimmage, but this actually helps his team out a lot because he could have been back about five yards. Turned it from a second in about 25 to a second in only six. And it wasn't like he just broke at a one. There's twice we thought he was down there. It's a nice play by Hedekiel. Even though he, even though he loses a yard, it still happened to be. Nice play by him. Some damage control for the Gales. Now, in this definite passing situation, you probably want to watch Hedekiel here. A matchup on the near side. Play action. Drew is going to look to the left on the far side. It's going to fall incomplete in between a couple of Celtic defenders. Yeah, Valdez on the coverage there. Christian Mack was just sitting in his own coverage. They expected the shot, and it came. 
10 for you and Hellwig. And he's another one of those guys that have gotten more and more involved as the weeks have gone on in the season. Now third and long. Both Oates and Schoenicker back for the Celtics. Now we got a timeout from the Gales. Timeout, Gales. Not sure what the timeout was for, is it doesn't look like we're going to talk anything over. Maybe just uh, a break to get your punter back out there. One player short on the field. Just a personnel issue as they'll get everyone out there for this punt. Had a kill, it's another one that he did not get nearly enough of. They're just going to blow this dead. Yeah, it, the reason I think they blew it dead was because five yards. Yeah, I, <laughs> I honestly, no I don't think anyone would have had five yards there. <laughs> Once again, the Celtics, great field position to the 34. First quarter has rolled along pretty quickly. So we've just got a minute 30 left. Yeah, and BM could be up 28 by the end of it if they score here. Well, 27. On first down. Just going to be another run for Azizi. Gets to the 30 yard line. Pick up a four. I go Azizi. Picks up four on the carry. Second and six. So second and six. Phillips. Just flips it out for Azizi, and that will have enough for a first down to the 21-yard line. Trapped up on that far side, but he's had a good day so far, Azizi. Yeah, Azizi's been catching the ball now. He's been running the ball very, very well. Even when the hole is closed, he still manages to find a way to get through. He's had a great day. Now from the 22. Another give, it's Azizi again, and now another burst from Azizi is going to see him get some open space, Will be and two he's flags. got a touchdown, we do have the flag, the yeah, the like you said. One of the flag, that close flag there by the 10, that is 100% on GC, I'm pretty sure, but the other one I'm not too sure. It is in that backfield, which is usually the space where you call offensive hold. Yeah, and they're going to call it. It's tough as a nice run for the Celtics is wiped off the board. We talk about the, the lack of a running game from the Celtics. Having a game like this going into the playoffs where your running game is just flying and established has got to be a big confidence booster. Yeah, it 100% gives the offensive linemen some confidence. And not only, it gives your running back some confidence. And sometimes as a running back, that's all it takes. You need confidence. You, sometimes you're a really good back. You just have no confidence. And you're not running with speed every time you get out there. You're not running as hard as you would when you do have a lot of confidence. Two flags right off the bat look like... It was against the Gales for offside. Not sure why it was blown dead so quickly. It could be procedure as well. Yeah, so it's going to be offside. Gales. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. First and 15. Yeah, another thing, too, is uh, once you get your running back going, he's. You have a play as a running back to run this way. This is where the hole is going to be. But once you have a bit of confidence, you start to improvise. You make those cuts like Azizi's been making. And that pass is dropped. Yeah, tough drop there from Curly. But yeah, the, it just makes a no, world of a difference for a running back, doesn't that it? One pass falls incomplete. So after that incompletion, 
we will have a short break between the quarters. At the break, the Celtics up 20. So we'll catch you in a bit. Back underway, and that pass is incomplete. Looking for Ryan Wolf. Good pass break up there. That was Popovich on the coverage. That's going to be third down. Interesting to see what Bishop Mack does here. They got a big lead. Might be at a range for Vare. More than likely, it is so a third and long. They're going to go for this. This is third and 15. Not a bad play call here. Phillips to throw, short underneath, incomplete. There is a flag. That honestly should have been picked off and probably taken house. I see what he's trying to do. It is third down, just bat that ball down. But at the same time, that's that's probably a house call. The hold goes against the Celtics. So the Gales do get their stop and get off the field. But like you're saying... Maybe a missed opportunity as they could have had points. Yeah, it looked like it was, like I said, right to him. And he just, you could see, he intentionally meant to hit that down. He didn't even attempt to catch it, which I did. Like, which you're probably coached to third down, just hit it down. But there, in that situation, there was no one in front of him. You're also down 20. Might as well try to get something going. But. Exactly, because the difference is not, it's what, 5, 10 yards there? Yeah. So might as well try to make a play. On the 27, it's the GC offense. Drew's going to unload over the middle. Caught by Helwig. A couple of Celtics on him on that crossing route, but he gets a first down. He had two guys in the area, but a nice ball by Drew there to Helwig. Helwig makes a nice catch, and that will be their first first down of the day. On a throw you see too often in D10 football, that throw over the middle, especially for plus yardage and a first down, you usually don't see that, I feel like. Yeah, you usually see them outside the numbers, most of the throws, but I honestly like when they, I feel like you can get it off pretty quick when they're cutting across the middle. We saw McDonald catch one on a slant today. It was just an easy pitch and catch. Get your guys in space, make some of these corners miss. These We talk about it. A lot of these D10 corners aren't the best tacklers. Got a flag blowing this dead right off the bat. It would have been a pitch out to Yoshioka, who was another guy. He was injured in that last game. Didn't see any of him since very early in the game. It's nice to see him Procedure. getting a touch early, Nails. though it was wiped out by a penalty. Five yard penalty. Repeat. First down. First and 15. It's first and 15 after the penalty. First and 15. Drew for the Gales. Going to be an inside handoff for Yoshioka. Hit immediately there. That was Marco Piconi on the tackle. That was another we keep talking, but this is an important one here for the Gales. You just stop Bishop Mack. Get the ball in decent field position. Not the greatest, but. If you put one together here, you can build off that, you know. You drive down the field, score, and why can't you do it again? It's a big second down and contributing to see if they can do so. March down that field. Drew's going to roll immediately. Just a quick pitch to the middle. And that's Matt Robinson. They're pushing him forward. And that ball's out. Marco Bacconi now plays ruled dead. A lot of Celtics are 
raising their hands asking why. One of the refs put his head down. <laughs> Say, other than that tackle, Baconi early on has been a little quiet. He's usually one of those guys that you're kind of quiet until you realize, wait, this guy's had. <laughs> I th honestly think it's it's not so much he's been quiet. He just hasn't had the fantastic games we've seen the last two times he's been out there. It's been ridiculous from him having the three touchdown game the one week. Yeah, I feel like our expectations have been set a little high. Yeah, since, uh, yeah, that, that was the first time we saw him. Yeah, so put up three tutties. Punny situation on third. Pedicule bobbles it and will barely get it off. Looked like Heavenberg Dunn almost got to him. That was Valdez that fielded it. Now we got a late flag. Justin Valdez on the return and a flag down at midfield. Flags against the Gales. Unnecessary roughness, GCBI. Face mask. Unnecessary masking. roughness, so a face mask, and that was what Verdun was Three complaining first down about. Celtics. So he does draw that call. So first and ten. Phillips. It's going to be a run down the middle and a nice hole still going. And another potentially ta uh, touchdown saving tackle by Bryson Cook. Yeah, he's had a couple of those. Two on special teams now and one at his uh, safety position. Well, I mean, sorry, that wasn't special. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> That's two now on uh, defense and one on special teams. Five after the big pickup on the ground. This is going to be a sweep. We got two flags immediately. Inside head off to Sam Schoeniger. Schoeniger just kind of stumbled on that run. Could add more. Right near the line of scrimmage. It's going to be against the Gales. Offside, I believe. Offside Gales, first and five Celtics. 7.28 to go in the half. Enrique is still in there behind Phillips. It will be a passing attempt for Phillips. He will find his man caught at the 15. And good enough for a first down is Finley Carney. Finley Carney on the catch, good for a first down. Carney stopped at the... 13-yard line, first and 10. I move down all the way to the 13 as the Celtic offense has been a good drive for them. They've been humming. Yeah, started out this one off of the 50. Two really big plays is what brought him down here. The throw, Phillips has a man wide open, complete. And that is... Ryan Wolf. Ryan Wolf I think Carney and Wolf were a little confused to which one of them that was for, but eventually it was shown to go to Wolf. Carney just kind of got out of the way. Second and inches. Won't be enough for a first down, though. They'll call it second and inches. Could see a sneak here, potentially a run. Is he not in the game while Will Hernandez there? Gonna be another. This is going to be a throw, actually. Yes, Fool B with the play the action. Touchdown. That's Ryan Wolf. So Celtics another Celtic touchdown. Six, this has just been a route early on. Great play design there, Wolf. The tight end just sneaks out after that play action, and uh, Phillips knows exactly where he is and just dumps it off. Doing a little pitch and catch. So Celtics at 26 we'll see if they can make it 27 on the PAT but just just dominant early on not sure what the flag was there as well don't believe it was on the Celtics 
Might move the extra point back, though. Oh, it was on the like Celtics. The Celtics, yeah. The touchdown, touchdown is good. good, though. Looks like it'll just be assessed on the start of the next drive. So now Vare to make it 27. Up and good. Bears extra point is up and good. 27 nothing. Bishop back. Objectional conduct assessed to the Celtics. Keep saying this every time. If the Gales go on offense, you need something now. <laughs> at this point, the game's on, honestly probably at a reach. Yeah. Unless, honestly, a miracle happens. <laughs> we maybe see BM have the second half they had against St. James that brought St. James back. But the Gales offense just really hasn't done too much. It's been a tough showing for them as we have a player shaken up on that extra point attempt, so we'll just take a moment while they tend to him. After all that, the Gales will start on the 45 after the objectionable conduct penalty. That was assessed after the touchdown. Clock's rolling, just approaching the six minute mark in the second quarter. Pitch out for Yoshioka. And Jose Yoshioka can't really get anything going. Good pursuit from Ryan Wolf. Yeah, Wolf, and I believe Evan Verdun got a He was a little slow getting to that edge, but great, great pursuit. Gales on those pitches outside they've been blocking okay like Matt Robinson had a good block lead block there but the Celtics just over pursue and really hound the ball carrier yeah that's the thing on those outside runs it's going to be tough to set the edge right so you're almost you're honestly taking the defensive linemen almost out of it and we're making uh the Celtics rely on their linebackers and their wolf comes in clutch but these these uh linebackers for Bishop Mack are unbelievable all over the field, shuttling from side to side. But maybe you think if you're GC with that heavy pursuit from the linebacking core, maybe just some misdirection or something to get the guys going the wrong way. Yeah, they run that double reverse that I like a lot. It usually throws off the defense and even me sometimes. That run's going to go nowhere. He was met immediately by Antonio Latizio. I don't know how much I like that play call run on second and long. Yeah, it felt pretty negative. It was like second and 11. 12, sorry. You never know. Maybe that one yard really really helps the field position on this punt. <laughs> Especially when you have nothing to lose. Why not pass the ball in that situation? Yeah, a little puzzling, but it'll end up in a punt either way. 
had a heal. This pressure immediately. Ryan Wolf just ran over the guy who's blocking him. And then a bobble. That ball's still loose. That might be Gale football. We'll see here. And it's going to go to the Celtics. No, it's not. Yeah, I thought maybe a green shirt jumped on that. But the Celtics luckily nearly a little bit of a disaster at midfield there. <laughs> Looked like it went off the hands of Marco Bacconi. But ultimately recovered by the Celtics. First and ten, Kane McDougal took a shot trying to block it, trying to help his punter out. Ryan Wolf just ran right over him. You love the determination, but seeing a guy of that size coming at you, it's got to be a scary sight. But he and he, he gets a run and start here flat footed. <laughs> Not always the best situation to be in run here for Azizi. Another big hole for him. Just so much space to maneuver with right when he gets the ball. Good gain of six. Tran there. Caden Tran had a uh, line right at Azizi. Azizi just made a quick cut and uh, Tran was falling on the ground. Luckily he had other tacklers there but Tran did a nice job to fire in that gap and just a nice move by Azizi. Throwing on second, quick hitter is complete. That's Oates, and a first down for Philip Oates. Oates is kind of the uh, safety valve on this team. He'll take a lot of the short action on those slants and curls. Don't really see him go. Well, we saw him go deep twice with uh, last week in the red zone. He's also a threat there, but doesn't run too many deep routes from that slot position. High snap, Azizi with lots of room. And there goes Akmal Azizi for a first and more to the 30. Akmal Azizi picks up a first down and more. I'll just signal the start of the three minute warning in the first half. Three minute warning, first and 10 Celtics. Down Another fantastic drive from the Celtics, though. Just First and moving with there. ease on the ground, especially. Yeah, they're not always looking for that big play. They're they're taking their time. Phillips is finding the open man, not forcing anything. And they're just running the ball well. And when you run the ball well, it really just opens up the whole game. Then you can throw in some play action screw, uh, to screw up the defense. Just so many things go well when you run the ball well. Another first down, another run for Azizi, and look at that space that he has. Big first down gash from Akmal Azizi. Akmal Azizi moves the chains once again for the Celtics. Brought down inside the 15-yard line, Marco down at the 13 first and 10. If you're the Celtics, you really pray that this efficiency can continue on the ground it's almost unprecedented how much uh how well they've been doing on the ground but just if that could continue somewhat into the playoffs that'd be huge for their offense. oh that would be so massive for this offense they're gonna get procedure here but if you can get that run game going they will work beautifully because this team can pass the ball so well after that first down penalty i wouldn't be shocked if they try to We've seen those shots to the left corner of the end zone for Oates. Oates isn't on that side. He's on the right side. Outside receiver. But who is there? That is Nelson. Outside receiver. So watch Phillips target that left side there. He loves to throw that uh, to that corner of the end zone. Already saw a touchdown from Nelson earlier in this game. Just going to be a run for Azizi. And another big gainer for Azizi. Ten and more. That's enough for a first down inside the three. His cuts today are just so wonderful. It's making them perfect. Right at the right time, quick, gaining speed after them too. And it almost, it feels like it goes back to right what we were talking about earlier. His confidence must be through the roof. Oh, yeah. We're going to have it first and I believe two to go. Yeah, not much, but... Yeah, going back to his easy, it just looks like he's making cuts that he wouldn't normally make. Uh, Going to be a read option here. It's Cole Phillips, and there is no doubt about that one. Touchdown Cole Celtics. Phillips packs another one on. Touchdown. That is 33 
Celtics. Gales on defense just aren't playing with too much emotion right now. And how can you, really, when you're down this much and it's not even halftime? Yeah, they've got to be fully demoralized. Their mascots dancing for Celtic touchdowns. It's, it's gotten out of control here. The well, mascot's got to dance at some point, so... <laughs> I guess he hasn't really had much to... Dance four. As Bear is going to try to make this a 34 point game. Nice and easy on the PAT. Martina Bear adds another one on 34. So it is 34 to go In the first half. And again, a reminder that this is just game two of our triple header for Friday Night Lights football. From two of three to go. This afternoon and evening. Getting a little chilly out there as the sun starts to set. Head on over to Griff's Locker for all of your official Griffin football swag. Pretty beautiful day out here for football. Not a cloud in the sky over Alumni Stadium. Just a bit windy, but that's got to be expected if you're playing here. Yeah, it's probably one of the warmer games these people have played in October. <laughs> it was chilly this morning. Yeah. Woke up with frost on the car, but... Drew's going to throw. Look like a double move for Hedick. It's picked off. June Kim. And he has had a couple of good performances from his safety spot. Still going as Kim across the 30 to the 28. Yeah, last week we saw Kim have a great day. Had an interception. And he continues that with an interception here. That, that's what you have the safety. Ex that's exactly what you have the safety there for. Hedekiel uses the double move so hard for a corner to defend that. Beats his corner. Drew sees that, throws it, but what he didn't see was the safety, Kim. We talk about this linebacking core being the strength of the defense, but Drew Kim from his safety spot, it feels like every time that he's really called upon, he's always in the area. Yeah, I think last week he gave up a catch. <laughs> that, was, that was not his fault completely. I think that was that unbelievable catch last week in the end zone was not his fault amazing coverage by him that's been his only real thing i can find negative and like i said that was just unreal coverage by him just a better catch sam shoniker on first down makes his way to the 20. sam shoniker runs to the outside and kim made up for it right after by getting an interception so is that his fair share of turnovers as has the celtic defense been able to turn them over fairly easily. Second down. Will be second and short. Phillips. This is another give for Azizi and another first down carry and more. Akmo Azizi, a late flag is thrown in. Someone had Azizi's jersey. Nice job for him to pa keep powering through, keep those legs moving. Unfortunately for Azizi, he's gone down. Looks like he's holding his left knee wonder if he just nicked a helmet or if it's something worse. Yeah, Hope for the best not. here. Especially, this has been his breakout game really this week. Yeah, sometimes you just get someone running in full speed helmet right to the knee. Doesn't feel the best. So we'll take a moment to see if he's okay and sort of the flag as well. We'll be right back.
So after the injury to Azizi, the Celtics are back out there. Phillips rolling to his right, evading a sack. Going to cut it back to the middle. There goes Phillips. Nice positive run for a first down. Yeah, Phillips had pressure right in his face, but great job by Phillips to recognize. He felt that pressure coming to his left, got out of the pocket quickly, and turned it into a positive game for the Celtics. The Celtics are going to call timeout after that first down run from Phillips. See how Azizi is doing. He took a while to get off the field, and we don't see him on there now. Hopefully he's all good. But really no reason to bring... I know he's having a great game, but really no reason to bring him back. You're going to need him next week for the playoffs, and you're already up 27. That's a good point. Might as well just... Uh, I might as well give your backup some some uh, tokes just in case he does have to play next week. Not even just for next week, also for next season as well. minute substitution now the Celtics will roll out here on first down Will Henriquez the change of pace back in there <coughs> Phillips it's going to be a play action just a dump off to Shawnaker who's got some room on that near side decent Phillips game dumps off to Shawnaker short make it second and three ball will be marked down at the second yard line there's a minute left in this half did see Phillips say something to Seth Nelson here so watch 23 on that far side doesn't go there because he has a wide open man in Shawnaker for another Shonaker touchdown. touchdown. It's Celtics. 40 to zip, and this has just been just been shelling here. Yeah, Celtics. yeah. Bear him, uh, Shawnaker just runs a quick, quick curl about five yards out. Just sits right, right in the uh, end zone. Makes himself available for the quarterback Phillips, who finds the easy reception for a touchdown. Martina Vare can make it a 41-point game at this point. Yeah, they're on pace for 80 points as we speak right now. Just unprecedented stuff. I think 45 seconds left, maybe a bit more than 82 they'd be on pace for. Still 45 seconds, a lot can happen, as we've seen. Just assuming that they don't put up another score, but obviously anything's possible, especially with the amount of turnovers they've created as a defense so far in this game. 45 and 9 tenths to go. And you'd like to think that a lot of Celtic players will be staying after the game and watching the results of St. James Centennial game as it'll dictate who they play in the playoffs. Yeah, um, maybe even scout out the competition because if you make it past that next round, you're probably going to have to play one of those two. Going to have to get through the best to be the best as it look like there's going to be a procedure call here on the Gales. Piconi. Yeah, Piconi's like mad because he baited the offensive lineman to jump, and he did, but in the end, he did <laughs> run right to the lineman there on encroachment. I see what he was trying to do, though. So first and five. It's going to be a run for Robinson, and that is going nowhere immediately. That's Antonio Latanzio. He was engaged with a blocker there and still made the stop. Yeah, those are pretty impressive. <laughs> you got someone on you blocking you, uh, hands in your shoulder pads, and you just reach around and grab the uh, running back, take him down. Great play. Latanzio has had a pretty good year on this defense with the Celtics. Had a couple of nice plays on that line. been a lot of him James Ludball also in the middle 
blocking up these running lanes. Subbed in Ethan Malone as well. It's just been an all-around good day for the Celtics defense, especially that line. Second and nine from the 36. Drew's just going to give this for Gettys, and Gettys is not going to get much after getting past the line of scrimmage. Shoniker was, or sorry, that was Wolf in there, as well as Evan Verdun. Twenty and five tenths to go. Should be the last play of the half as long as GC plays their cards right. Not sure if this is going to be a knee or maybe they take a shot or run an actual play here on third down. So this will. If you're the Gales, just last. take a shot here. Why not? Yeah, there's really nothing to lose. they end up not doing they will take a knee and end this half of football which they desperately wanted to get out of as they go into the half down 41 to the Celtics so uh, yeah not the uh, not the most even game at halftime but stick around we will see you guys for the start of the second half
Now on her way here to start the second half. A little bit of a huddle between JC. It maybe looked like they could have gone onside. They didn't end up doing it. Now we're going to have a whistle, and they're going to blow this back. Kecker looks like he got a bit too anxious and kicked it a little early. Set it up again. But yeah, it looked like there was that extended huddle from the Gales, so maybe the thought of going onside, there's really nothing to lose, but... Set this kick and head a keel. Gonna look to get it away. It's a high one who takes a hop at the 25, and here comes Oates. And there goes Philip Oates, still going with the convoy of blocks, and across the 50, still going. What balance from Philip Oates as he's oh, wrapped up across the 45. He do? almost spun out of that one too. You saw so many bodies in the middle there. You're like, how in the world did he get out of it? But he broke it to the outside, broke a couple more. And like I said, he almost broke that last one, but eventually he gets taken down. Because of that great return, the Celtics will set up shop at the 44-yard line of the Gales. A great starting field position continues for the Celtics. Run the ball here, and a nice gain bouncing it to the outside is Will Henriquez. Solid gain up to up to the 37. Henriquez probably going to see the rest of this game. Guessing as easy's out for the rest. We saw him go down earlier. Even if he is healthy, I don't think we'll see him back in this game. Uh, no, no real. They got four to pick up on second. Quick run up the middle for Henriquez, who's got a first down. That would be enough for a first down. Henriquez to the 32. Get a little note. First the clock Celtics. will be running due to the score. So if the second half flows by a bit quicker, that will be the reason. So no real for the Celtics. You don't have to run the ball. Because in a game like this, you'd think run the ball so the clock bleeds out. You know, you don't get into trouble. But they can do whatever they want. This clock's running because they're up so big. Another one for Henriquez. A plunge only goes to the 30. And if you're the Gales and you want to have any chance of coming back in this game, I know it is a big, big feat. But you're going to have to get a score. Probably go... Well, actually, you'll get a score. Bring that within 35. You hit the extra point. It goes to 34. And the clock will then go back to normal. one score to get the clock to stop bleeding out on you if you're the Gales. Second down, Phillips, quick throw, looking for Oates as it falls incomplete. Looked like he just got turned around just in time for that ball, wasn't it? Yeah, a bit off by Phillips there, just a bit high, a bit too quick, and uh, Oates didn't have time to readjust there. So right from the 30, Celtics will keep their offense out on third down. Would be a monster of a kick, 37 yards. Phillips throwing over the middle, incomplete intended for Wolf. And a nice stop there from the Gales. Yeah, Phillips there, he just never got around to that left side because if he did, he would have seen, I believe that was Curly and then Seanaker also was pretty open. I think Curly was a bit more wide open than Seanaker, but it's a little mistake, not too big of a deal for Phillips there. Still made a decent throw, not into any danger. It's now GC at their own 30-yard line.
haven't been able to continue drives. I haven't really been able to start drives, in all honesty. First down. I'm going to fake the pitch. It's going to be Adam Gettys right up the middle, and he's not getting anything. Marco Bacconi is the one that ended up making that tackle for the Celtics. Start to see as this game goes out how many of these guys start to come off for the Celtics, and maybe we see some new, fresh faces out there. Second down. Last game of the season to blow when like this. You'd like to rotate. Exactly. You want to get the, some of those depth guys in who haven't played much this year. Just in case you need to use them in a situation in playoffs, and it will help for next year. Some of those younger guys, the grade 11s, grade 10s, getting some action. Second along after the short run for Gettys. It's going to be another give. It's Matt Robinson. And Robinson is, wow, what a play by him to drive Bacconi off him, but still not going to get much. Yeah, you won't see that much. Bacconi has a head of steam coming and wrapping you. Usually you go down, but make strong run by Robinson. It just didn't result in much. It's initially met by Sam Schlater, so just make two guys miss, but still it's the story of that pursuit from the Celtic defense just been unrelent like, unrelenting. And the good thing, if you have a good pursuit as a team, you, you don't really, you'll go for <laughs> riskier tackles you know sometimes you sit you break down and you kind of wait for the guy here you can just kind of go full speed and try to hit the guy as hard as you possibly can you miss you know that a guy's gonna have your back and that's what you got to do you know do your job yeah that gang tackling mentality if everyone's in the right spot you can play more a bit more recklessly More of a direct punt there from Hedekiel. Takes a hop and goes right out of bounds. There was pressure immediately in his face. Hedekiel had one really good punt to start off this game, but since then it has not been great from him. Obviously not a punter, mostly a receiver. That's where he makes his impact. But I think today, usually in losses, Hedekiel still has multiple catches for good substantial amount of yards Celtics have really done a good job in bracketing them not letting them have anything I mean we, we see this like the Gales offense has done anything but they really haven't been able to move so you can't really <laughs> fully blame the receivers yeah they just haven't been able to get the run going and then really haven't gone to the passing game too often that first play of the game they got picked off and it's like they abandoned it it's going to be a run. It's Henriquez, and he's got a burst on that near side, wrapped up finally by Adam Geddes after a first down over the 35. Will Henriquez with a huge gain and a first down. Right up to the 32-yard line. It's good forward running. Henriquez marked down at the 32. First and 10. Second down, another, sorry, that was a first down carry for Henriquez. It's now on second down. Phillips rolls to his right. Pressure in his face immediately. That ball is caught. That's Inuri with the catch over the 20 yard line and a first down for the Celtics. Inuri on the catch and a first down. Celtics yet again into the red zone. The Celtics just moving this ball down. First and 10 from the GCBI 18 yard line. Back into the red zone for the. Couldn't even tell you how many times today. <laughs> Just been, yeah, multiple trips up there for the Celtics. And offensively, it, it feels like every time they get the ball, they've just marched down there and put together a heck of a drive. Yeah, it seems like every time we look up, they're on GC side of the field. Even when they started 
Like, I don't really know if they've had a possession start in their own territory. And I'm trying to think. I honestly can't think of one. I think maybe the first one of the second half, unless they return that over half. No, remember oh, that Oh, yeah, there was that Oates return. Yeah, so yeah. I I think you're right. Yeah, so they've don't... just they've dominated the uh, field position battle. And we talk about, sometimes people don't realize how important that is. Field position in, in high school football is everything. Mm-hmm. Even we saw last game, Lourdes was, they just struggled to get out of their own territory, and you saw they just couldn't get anything going. It's such a huge determining factor in D10 football. As Phillips is going to hand this off to Henriquez once again. That's going to be a loss of yardage. Finally, the Gales getting a stop behind the sticks. That was Espindola with the tackle. Be interesting to see what the uh, Celtics do here. Second and twelve. You don't usually run the ball, but you're up by so much. This is second and long. <laughs> second and twelve. See what they do here on offense. Looks like it's going to be a pass rolling out to his right as Phillips, looking nearly inter. It is intercepted, <gasps> off the chest of the defensive back and into the hands of Gettys. It looks like. Phillips, I see, just made a mistake there. He saw the defender, I know, on that curl, but he decided to force that anyway. That's just him not being patient enough. Just tried to force it, and that was the wrong decision by him. Got tipped. Dangerous pass. If he would have waited a bit longer, he had a curly going in that far back of the end zone. But on the run, I don't know if he could have had the arm to uh, get that one. But Phillips is pretty good arm, so... It's a tough ball. It was initially tipped off of the chest of Ogden Popovich. Yeah, into the hands of Gettys. The Gales offense rolls back out here once again, just looking to get a first down or two. Maybe get, get over half. Something. And if you're Phillips also, that's the time you want to throw an interception in a game like this. It doesn't impact you. You can learn from it. Quick swing out to Robinson. And Robinson is going to get back to the original line of scrimmage. A couple of Celtics in on the tackle. And that's what it's been. They've been consistently running on first down, and it just has not worked. And then you're in the second and long-to-go situations, and it's, it's tough to play football that way. Because almost every time they know you're passing the ball here. It's easy for them to sit back. And even if you run, their run defense is so good, they're not too concerned about it. Second and nine. Drew. Scott. Yoshioka. He had Yoshioka, who was dumped after it goes off of him, falls incomplete. Pacconi too almost had that. That ball laid up there for a while, and Pacconi had to play, chased it down, but just dropped before he could get there. So but it sat up there forever. So much Schlater to look to be in the area. But yeah, you just hold your breath every time that ball pops up in the air, especially if you're a GC fan. You just don't <laughs> yeah. want this to get worse. Because it just happened to the Celtic. The ball gets popped up, the ball gets picked, and then turnover, but... Celtics D did a nice job of getting out of that one. And then they're just going to blow this dead here. We got a timeout from the Gales. Does that switch the side of the field now? Or the don't quarter did end right before, the end, right before that timeout was called. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't believe it will. Also to note here from the Celtics, that's their quarterback, Cole Phillips, coming off from the sideline. Now on the near side of the field on the track. From the looks of it. Kind of looks like he's walking with a limp. Yeah, well, it just looks like he should be done for the game, potentially, because you don't like yeah, seeing if a you're, guy if you're walking with a limp a bit, then I'm sure Justin Schoenaker made the decision to just send him back to the locker room, which I think is a wise one. Yeah. You just... 
don't like to see that concern of him coming straight off of the sideline. And I don't know if you saw that, but it looked like two of Azizi's teammates had just carried him out to the locker room. So he's did definitely not. done for the day. Didn't have his pads on. He said carry him, so that's... Yeah, he, uh, he couldn't get over here on by himself, so that's not a good sign. No, you're hoping if you're a Celtic fan that that's... Uh... That maybe is just precautionary for the playoffs, but that's not a good sign as you're starting running back going down like that. That ball's out from Shoniker and picked up by Bryson Cook, who has had a heck of a day on GC, smoked by Piconi. Yeah, if you need, if you uh, have one spotlight in this game for the uh, Gales, it would be Cook. He's made three huge tackles in there. Just scoops up the fumble. Yeah, it's tough to take positives away for the Gales, but... One of them has been Bryson Cook. Special teams plays, defensive plays. It's been good for them, but can't say the rest of the team has been on his level. Gale start from the 45 on their own side of the field. As we switch sides, that was the final play of the third quarter. Gales will take over first and 10 from their 45. Actually, a spotlight from the Gales here. They did not give up a touchdown there. I mean, any points in that uh, quarter. So, coming out of half, your coach probably said, let's win this second half. And right now, it is tied. It's going to be a, looks like a running back throw for Gettys, which probably should have been picked off in an area where there's a ton of white shirts. Yeah, looks like he was trying to flip back to the yeah, quarterback. Yeah, Gettys just didn't have the arm to get it over there. Because Drew actually had a step on everyone. But he underestimate how long of a throw that is because this field's so wide. Oh, yeah. Wide field. He's on the left hash. He's trying to throw it over to that right side. That's a tough throw. It's now a second and ten after the incompletion. Drew throw rolling to his left I was gonna set and bomb this one here for Hedeke who makes an adjustment and can't get to that ball just overthrown <laughs> Drew put everything into that one yeah, unloaded it coverage was from Daniel Patrick on the play brings up third looks like Hedeke is gonna have to get ready get back there and punt this one away and this is Phillips. Maybe he just had to go to the washroom because he is running now, jogging back to the sideline. Yeah, positive signs for the Celtics then. Yeah, because we thought he was walking with a bit of a limp, but looks perfectly fine now. Here's a little bit of a Lamar Jackson moment. <laughs> Game isn't as close to what it, what it was when he did it. Looks like he was walking with a limp too when he was walking back. We know why. So it looks like we have a Gale player shaken up for that play, that's Reef Pacha. Just take a moment for him. Now to punt it away is where is Hedekiel. Does get it away. That's one of his better Ooh, ones today. Hedekiel. Yeah, he and looks yeah, for Dunn. I don't know if there was a flag there, but I think just on the follow-through, he hit for Dunn. 
Now on the other side of the field, here's Sam Shoniker. There goes Shoniker. He's being chased down by Cook, and Cook is not going to get him finally. Misses a, a touchdown saving tackle, but Sam Shoniker. That's a little redemption for him. He fumbled that last time to give the Gales possession. Then when the Gales end up punting, they're going to punt it back to Shoniker. Shoniker takes it house, so people forget about that fumble real quick. Looked like he didn't have the burst there, and then all of a sudden, it just like he had a third lung and just burned past Cook for that. Yeah, Cook last almost guy. had him again. Another game saving, ta well, touchdown saving tackle would have been huge for him just to add on to that day, but good pursuit by him. But Shoniker just a touch faster. Yeah, good return from him to put up some points on the board as they'll check in where his head to kill, and we'll take a short break. And Bear is going to look to put this one through. Tack on another to her point total as it's been uh, quite a few PATs that she's put through. Yeah, Bear's got herself pretty much a touchdown with the amount of points she's kicked today. I think actually, yeah, I think it is six that she has. Good day for her. The only one was blocked. As a reminder, after the game, we asked if you're looking to meet the player or coach. Oh, 48 to nothing. For the Celtics. Looking like a little bit of a more rotated defense now for the Celtics. Still a couple of key players in there. Gale's obviously uh, not looking to go with a, a high tempo in this game right now. Content to just let this clock bleed out. Don't let it get any more embarrassing than it has been. It's going to be a run up the middle for Gettys trying to spin off a tackle. It's a nice pick up of four. Picks up five on first down. Yeah, just uh, just four yards. See a bunch of fresh new faces, as you mentioned, for the Celtics there. Wolf out of the game. One notable. Kim still in the game at safety. They brought in a new half there. Corner staying the same, though. With the exception of uh, Justin Valdez hasn't been out there. A couple snaps usually starts opposite of Verdun. It's going to be another give for Robinson, and Robinson's got a first down for the Gales. Nice first down for GCVI. I like to see that if you're a fan of this offense. 
Wow. Yeah, something that you haven't seen probably all day. Yeah, just uh, it's been one of those, but nice first down pickup with a couple of runs on the ground. Seven and change still remaining in this game. Clock's been running. Drew on first and ten. Going to be a pitch out. And there is Robinson. Sorry, that was Adam Geddes. My apologies as he picks up three. It'll be second and seven. Geddes on the run again. Picks up a few yards. We'll see where they spot the ball. Second down. Just short of three. They're going to give him two. It'll be second and eight. Second and long. Another run. Gettys. And he's going to be wrapped up. That was Ladin Zio who just wouldn't let him go. Eventually, second effort gets him down there. So it'll be third down. Pick up a three. Gettys on the carry. Gets into Celtic territory down at the 54. Still a lot of Celtic starters out there. You'd think they'd start to move them off the field. Mm -hmm. There is five minutes left in this game, and you're up 48 points. It doesn't really matter what the score looks like at the end. <laughs> you're going to win. <laughs> yeah. There's just simply not enough time. So you might as well as just... I don't know why they have a starter on the field, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a little questionable there. Definitely looks like they have the depth to make some rotations as that's a third down carry for Gettys and he's just going nowhere. Sam Shoniker is the one pushing him back. On third down carry wrapped up by Sam Shoniker. That will be a turnover on downs. So the Celtics, another stop in this game. And this is more like it, that offense, besides the offensive line, which... You want to give your backup quarterback the best pocket you can, so give him the offensive line. Don't put him in danger. But a lot of uh, fresh new faces out there on receiver. So this is Ashton Goodwin. We saw him start the last game for the Celtics. Lots of pressure in his face last game. So that centennial defensive line had a great push for most of the game. This is going to be a run on first. Decent pickup. That was Eden Tennant on the carry. Second and short. Going to be another run. Nice couple of cuts there and a first down for Eden Tennant who's had two efficient carries to start this game off for him. Yeah, it seems like he has a little fan section out here because every time he touches the ball, people are going nuts. He's had two nice runs, though, to start it off. Yeah, I love to see the support from the crowd. Another run. Tennant. Still going. And a nice couple of runs for him as that's going to be enough for a first down again. Yeah, it took a bit of contact there, brushed it off though, and kept going. And it breaks the plane, another first down, Celtics. Another first down. Another run for Tennant. And that one's just going to pick up three. Be offside. 
guy got on the field late. I believe that's... that late sub was Andrew Miller. Procedure against the Celtics. Repeat first down. Five yard penalty. Be five yards on the penalty, sets up first and 15. Going to be another run. That ball's on the ground. Looked like a little bit of a miscommunication on the handoff between Tennant and Goodwin. Ball comes loose. A loss of a few yards on the play. Mark it down at the 29-yard line. Second. This is what you like to see from the Celtics. A lot of different guys getting in here. That's who you want. Guys getting experience. A couple game time snaps. Can't replicate these snaps in practice. Goodwin to throw. Quick hitter is high and incomplete. Pass on second and 18 is incomplete. That brings up third down. So a 36 yarder for Martina Vare. We haven't seen this type of range from her yet. Yeah, and this this wind is definitely gonna be a factor. Would be in her face. Kick is up and just short. Rouge? It will be a rouge though, so Martina Vare grabs another point. Yep, that's a touchdown and the extra point for her tonight. Here's 35 yarders. Seven points to her name. And we'll probably see one last play before this game comes to a close as we are inside the 32nd mark. And just can't say enough about what the Celtics have done in this game. Probably just another kneel down. We'll... Uh, Look forward, we've previewed it enough already, but we'll just give you one last reminder. Seven o'clock, we got the St. James Lions and the Centennial Spartans. Be for the first seed going to the playoffs, should be a dandy of a game. As one last kneel down should conclude it here, an all out great performance from the Celtics. Just a complete game from them. Yeah, never got in danger. Right off the bat, picked the first pass off. Two plays later, they were in the end zone and they didn't look back from there. One last play. It won't be a kneel down. It'll be a run for Matt Robinson. And Robinson is just going to be helped out of bounds by a couple of Celtics. And that will do it for the game. The BM Celtics with a playoff berth. They are going to be looking forward to seeing the winner of this next one to see who they play. But they win this one 49 to zip. A dominant performance. We will see you guys back here at 7 o'clock for the marquee matchup of the night between the Spartans and the Lions. Thank you for tuning in.